Hello, everyone. Welcome to my 2020 top 10 list of hot, resilient trends in green roof and green wall design, plus a look into 2021. Hi, I'm Linda Velasquez from GreenRoofs.com, and we've certainly had an unprecedented and super challenging year on many fronts and on a truly global scale. Potentially, the ever-evolving COVID-19 pandemic could be the most serious health and economic threat of our lifetime. It's said that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger, right? The pandemic will leave a lasting effect in many areas, including design and construction, and now everyone is seeking stability beyond COVID-19. We are also reinvigorating our living architecture and green infrastructure industry in many ways. Raising the bar for a resilient future, design must evolve so we more successfully adapt to adverse events and emerge well positioned to thrive afterwards. Nature-based solutions can be avant-garde and the well-informed design provocateur can provide moments of aesthetic transcendence while integrating green infrastructure. Drawing upon the work of the National Research Council and others, a shared definition of resilience is the ability to prepare and plan for, absorb, recover from, and more successfully adapt to adverse events. And so the projects I've selected have enhanced their resiliency by integrating green infrastructure elements into other plans to maximize co-benefits and share resources across interconnected systems. You'll see that the hot top 10 list for 2020 and 21 is a bit different in that trends are defined in terms of their resiliency application. I've curated a selection of truly resilient global architecture from across six continents to hopefully keep you inspired. Due to the serious nature of the pandemic, at first I wasn't going to include my funny examples, but then I figured, well, we all need just a bit of a laugh, right? Before I show you just some of the finest and most creative projects from around the world, here are a few projects that for one reason or another just couldn't quite make it into the top 10 for 2020. Not on the list is the Olympus Tower Farm near Provo, Utah. It's an indoor ag system with tall agricultural towers stacked with trays of wheatgrass, which only take up a little over 850 square feet here on the ground. They can grow as much wheat or barley grass as 35 to 50 acres of farmland. Very productive indeed. But who or what is the target market for this robotic system? What's it actually grown for? Can you imagine? It's for cow feed. Although they're saving land with this vertical farm, shouldn't we just try and eat less meat and then we can actually reduce our methane levels? After all, it is one of the main contributors to global greenhouse gases. Another definitely not a favorite is the survival condo located at a secret location somewhere in Kansas. This former missile silo has been turned into a luxurious survival condo for up to 75 rich people for the next war or pandemic. It has 15 floors, is located 200 feet underground, and has all the commodities found in their main mansions and penthouses. You find a wine cellar, rock climbing, even a pet park. Its indoor farm can provide fish and vegetables for 70 people for as long as necessary. This doomsday luxury resort is an apocalypse not on the list. And it's not so much funny as just distasteful and wasteful, and well, maybe just a bit interesting in a really bad way. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Number 10, client-specific boutique green roofs and green walls. This is a perennial favorite category of ours for those projects that are just too unique to fit into any specific category. Just what are their driving factors? The Shiroya Hotel's Green Tower in Japan asks its guests to relax and enjoy art, food, and nature. Its 25-room hotel has recently been renovated and added to. The two main parts are the Heritage Tower, which dates back to the 1970s, and the brand new Green Tower that appears as a piece of undulating landscape sprouting from the original building. Conceived as a living room, architect Su Fujimoto 
says the idea was to combine the existing building's green atrium spaces with the exterior hill-like landscape as part of a continuous experience of nature within the city. Multiple designers have created individual and very tranquil public spaces, along with single closed private rooms full of unique art pieces. With almost a one-story height differential, the surroundings mix a typical Japanese landscape with the many different sides of the buildings, just enveloped in green. The Real Dos has plans reaching for the sky and grounding the earth in Lima, Peru. Jean Nouvel's first building in the city, the facade is the fundamental element of the dialogue with the environment. The architects say the plant services are an evocation of the previous biodiversity before the architectural intervention. Real Dos is a work of adaptation and uniqueness. The building is linked to the formal diversity of the environment and is differentiated by its lightness and color. Nouvel usually studies the culture of the countries where he builds, and in this case, he was inspired by the lively colors of Peruvian handicraft fabrics, thereby revisiting the country's chromatic aesthetic. Due to Lima's desert climate, the designers specified drought-tolerant vegetation within 12 centimeters of growing media on the living roof. Approximately 8,500 plants, representing more than 25 species, were planted on the over 5,600 square foot green roof, with about 13,000 plants of 20 species planted on its almost 4,000 square feet of different green walls. Returning reflections of its striking glass envelope covered with multicolored panels and its beautiful vegetative surfaces onto the neighbor's glass-clad facades, the Real Dos is a plant oasis in the midst of commercial area Lima, inspired by Peru's rich textile history. Designed by Herzog and Demuron, the new district at Dreispitz Nord Migros will be topping a shopping center with a middle school. It will have 800 apartments, including low-income, within a trio of three pointed towers and two large green open spaces and other amenities. The Canton of Basel has decided to build the new middle school on the large green roof area of the renovated Migros Basel shopping center. The 700 students and teachers of the secondary school will enjoy great views of the Gundeli and Bruglinger Plains as well as having high quality indoor and outdoor spaces. The aim is to connect the Dreispitz Nord to the Gundeli district, creating a vibrant mixed use area in the lively urban district where non motorized traffic will have priority. 83% of the area will be open to the public. With the new development, Baselstadt expects a potential of 30,000 new jobs in the next 10 years while offering affordable living options to its residents. Creating a home that people won't dare build for themselves to welcome 110 visitors daily is what Maggie Center Leeds in the UK has done brilliantly. As you'll see further on, this wonderful project could have been placed in a couple of other categories. Located across the UK with some abroad, Maggie Center's are places where people with cancer and their family and friends can go to find free practical and emotional support. They follow the approach of caring promoted by Maggie Keswick Jenks, a belief that people should not lose the joy of living in the fear of dying. Designed by Heatherwick Studio, the center is expressed as a grouping of large-scale plantings of various sizes and its structure is built from a prefabricated and sustainably sourced spruce timber system. The Leeds Maggie Center is a psychologically sensitive building immersed in thousands of plants, offering welcoming and soulful spaces for people affected by cancer. Above, there is a private space for staff to rest and gather strength, and a sheltered roof garden accessible to all. The green roof garden is inspired by Yorkshire woodlands and features native English species of plants alongside areas of evergreen to provide warmth in the winter months. The innovative step building brings each section of garden planting into and over the building itself. 
Inspired by the namesake's love of gardening, the many visitors are encouraged to participate in the care of the 23,000 bulbs and 17,000 plants found on site. Suspended from the ceiling, the Hanging Garden at Sea Future City in Shenzhen offers a biophilic dance with a dragon. French botanist Patrick Blanc's The Jungle Dragon Dance is a closed planted ribbon taking inspiration from both tropical rainforests and high mountains to calm and inspire visitors at the recently completed high-tech 2,000 square meter Sea Future Lab. Led by Quad Studio, the innovative platform congregates groups of talented teams and individuals from around the globe who share pioneering visions in the fields of science, technology, arts, design, nature, and creativity. The Jungle Dragon Dance is a closed ribbon about 60 meters long, planted on both sides, and each side is about 30 centimeters high. The Hanging Garden is where technology meets nature, with 46 species of tropical plants, for a total of about 2,250 plants. The suspended green ribbon sculpture wraps around the exhibition spaces and penetrates the glass towards the garden outside. The fish pond on the ground defines the way visitors move around the space, and the jungle dragon dance is reflected beautifully. Snaking through the interior garden, the planted ribbon in effect penetrates the glass, which faces toward another Patrick Blanc vertical garden outside. Referring to the entire Sea Future City project, Quad says, By combining the functions of an art gallery, co-working space, garden, discussion forum, and social gathering area, each space was designed to adapt to the ever-changing needs of society. Number nine, reflections of nature. The building as public and private art, mirroring image of the natural and built environments. The world's first publicly accessible art depot or museum in Rotterdam has a curved mirrored facade and beautiful roof garden offering fantastic panorama views. Similar in concept to the Bean at Millennium Park in Chicago, visitors can see themselves in an abstracted way. The museum hosts an extensive collection of 151,000 priceless objects inside, and five different climate zones will house the pieces according to each's climatic needs, rather than by era or genre. The rooftop forest holds 75 beautiful multi-stemmed birch trees. The reflective skin is made up of 6,609 square meters of glass subdivided into over 1,600 mirrored panels. The museum directors are extremely proud to be able to share the treasures once again, which haven't been accessible together since 1935. While the museum has a large footprint overall, its effect on the environment is diminished due to the bowl-like form of the architecture rising into the sky. Architects MVRDV say the depot design is daring and its success comes from the direct dialogue with all parties involved. Built on one of Hong Kong's most expensive plots of land, the 190 meter or 623 foot high 36 story glass skyscraper known as Tu Murray Road is shaped like the native blooming Hong Kong orchid tree flower. Zaha Hadid Architects says, the design reinterprets the structural forms and layering of a boenia bud about to blossom. The building's base is elevated above the ground to shelter courtyards and gardens that result in new civic plazas enveloped by nature. The urban oasis will boast tree-filled balconies, an above-ground running track, and rooftop banquet hall. The Sky Garden serves as an outdoor recreational space with an aquaponics planting network to act as a biological air purifying filter. Two weather stations installed at street and roof level will monitor real-time outdoor conditions to inform occupants of outdoor air quality and, according to the architect, will have a 26% reduction in electricity demand which will be achieved with the use of smart chiller plant optimization, high-efficiency HVAC equipment, 
and daylight sensors to reduce artificial lighting during periods of sufficient natural light. The distinctive facade has four ply, double laminated, double curved insulated glass units, which are designed to withstand the region's powerful summer typhoons. The curved glass facade also helps to blur the boundary between the building's interiors and the surrounding gardens and city beyond. With an introspective twist from the previous examples of reflections of nature, here's the Sankaklar Mosque in Istanbul. Winner of the Aga Khan Award and Mies van der Rohe Award, Emre Aralat's design was intended to create a stark divide between the chaotic outer world and the calm cave-like space to be found within. On the outside, the family mosque reflects its prairie landscape which is separated from the surrounding suburban gated communities by a busy highway. The high walls surrounding the park on the upper courtyard of the mosque depict a clear boundary between the chaotic outer world and the calm atmosphere of the public park. While the exterior of the mosque reflects the surrounding topography by blending in seamlessly, inside, visitors enter a different world. This cavernous space becomes a dramatic setting to pray. The wall features slits and fractures, enhancing the serene environment with bits of daylight filtering into the prayer hall. The project constantly plays off the tension between man-made and natural and reflects the architect who says the mosque becomes almost one with both the hill and the valley through its surface borrowed from nature. Number eight, new ways to work healthily in the wake of COVID-19. Return to workplace protocols have underscored healthy building interiors and are supporting social distancing. Architects Jose Selgas and Lucia Cano, collectively known as Selgas Cano, have created the Second Home Hollywood, an adaptive reuse campus in LA. Conceived as an indoor-outdoor wonderland, the 90,000-square-foot urban campus for creatives and entrepreneurs encompasses 60 circular acrylic pods under yellow roofs that are set in a lush, biophilic garden connected by a network of paths. Previously, the site held two structures, one designed in 1964 by architect Paul Williams, the first recognized African-American architect working in Los Angeles. This two-story building was retained and the second demolished for the pots in a garden. Private and common facilities abound here. The pots are surrounded by a lush 50,000 square foot garden of now over 6,500 plants, much of it native and drought tolerant, situated on the former parking lot. Gardens were built with four feet of soil on top of the parking slab, burying the bungalows down to desk height. Flourishing plants inside and out Transparent tube-like workspaces for 200, plus roaming memberships, a bookstore, and a 200-person auditorium offer spacious and healthy rooms that pump in fresh air directly from the outside. The architects say, instead of bringing the garden inside the office, we have brought the office out to the garden. Reconsidering the way we live, each 10-hectare square unit at Awar El Bait in Morocco is the city's macro unit. Buildings are placed next to each other, forming a chain of volumes. Here you can work from home with flexible and lively spaces. The volumes are fragmented on the upper floors to create a succession of terraces open onto the landscape and include green roofs, vegetable gardens, and seedling greenhouses with two types of housing, apartment buildings and private villas. The design rethinks traditional housing models to include working from home with flexible, scalable, and lively spaces to reinvent the Moroccan Medina. In the bottom diagram, you can see how different variations can be configured for different households. The simple design logic is to build high and dense in the center of each macro unit and around a central void, which is the place of public and social life in the neighborhood and then erect low at the periphery. Architects say, Awar Albait brings back a natural environment into the city, promoting new commonly shared spaces 
and social interactions between its residents. Number seven, genius loci, spirit of place to soothe your soul. There's really no place like home within a native ecology. The multi-award winning Bendigo Hospital is the largest in Victoria, Australia, with numerous sustainable design features. Oculus used an evidence-based and biophilic design approach across the project, incorporating fractal leaf structures and utilizing natural and local materials, moving water and textured planting. Green infrastructure initiatives include water-sensitive urban design, structural soils, and with significant increases in biodiversity, habitat, and the urban forest, restoring valuable ecological and hydrological systems across the precinct. The building integrates sustainable thinking into all elements of the design to create a healing and therapeutic environment, especially with its many native gardens. In fact, Bendigo has over 46 balconies, green roofs, roof decks, and courtyards, including 20 mental health courtyards. Recognizing the region's significant cultural heritage, the design team collaborated with the Jaja Warren Clan's Aboriginal Corporation, including the co-design of the Aboriginal Services Courtyard. With a fire pit and plantings, cultural practice and education are enabled. Within the broader precinct, an Aboriginal garden incorporates more local Indigenous planting and celebrates a valuable cultural artifact, a relocated scarred tree. Local Chinese history is also celebrated in a dedicated community garden. Connection and kindness were the landscape architectural design drivers, and references to the site's history and ecology have helped deliver social, environmental, and cultural benefits with a strong sense of place for patients, staff, visitors, and the community. Designed by Snohetta, the Theodore Roosevelt Presidential Library will be located at the northeast edge of a butte amidst the rich landscapes of the North Dakotan Badlands. The design is informed by the 26th U.S. President's personal reflections on the landscape, his commitment to environmental stewardship, and the periods of quiet introspection and civic engagement that marked his life. Snohetta's landscape architects have been leading the design, and the Presidential Library will be more than just a building. Envisioned as a journey through a preserved landscape of diverse habitats, punctuated with small pavilions, providing spaces for reflection and activity ranging from contemplative nooks to expansive vistas. Native plants only will be used throughout. Visitors can ascend the accessible green roof for commanding views of the Theodore Roosevelt National Park, including historical settings in the Little Missouri River Valley and the location of Roosevelt's Elkhorn Ranch far in the distance. A covered porch faces the neighboring valleys, used for meetings and gatherings. Plus, the roof provides an ideal location for stargazing at night. Adventure paths on the library loop will connect to the nearby Ma Da He Trail and locally sourced and renewable materials and sophisticated energy systems will set a new standard for sustainable design in the region. Architects UN Studio says it has drawn inspiration for its Yosu Kyongdo Island Master Plan in South Korea from traditional Korean gardens, which offer a place for human activities while also celebrating flora and fauna. The design envisions a sustainable leisure destination where the natural and man-made environments are seamlessly linked. The development has three neighborhoods across the 470,000 square meter site, Kyongdo Gateway, Sunrise Waterfront, and Seabreeze Coast, each with a distinct garden concept. Placing the different needs and wishes of the various users at the center of the design, the master plan offers a number of destinations, from affordable options, such as a family resort, to more exclusive private villas on a smaller neighboring island. The buildings are embedded in the landscape and follow its natural morphology, and the island's mountainous terrain extends panoramic views of the ocean and of the horizon. 
An important legacy of traditional Korean gardens is to ensure how the scenery is framed to help maintain the natural landscape as a continuous theme inside and out. Buildings are responsive to the natural environment and center around the green qualities inherent to the island, enriching an existing conservation areas while also making space for a lush forest. Number six, environmental resiliency via a climate responsive typology. Designing with nature ensures a more secure and easy comfort. The design of the new Jakob Factory Saigon presents a strategically land saving project with focus elements of passive design. Designed by Roli Marchini Architecten and G8A Architects, the highly innovative manufacturing space for Jakob Rope Systems boasts completely naturally ventilated manufacturing halls. Taking reference from the traditional tropical architecture of the region, the environmentally friendly alternative offers an innovative vertical densification strategy, stacking the usable zones on superimposed slats. Covered in a wide variety of tropical plants, the design has a porous facade devised as a lush planted skin. The living wall horizontal planters not only filter rain and sun, but also contribute to lowering the atmospheric temperature through evaporation, acting as air purifiers and dust particle binders, as well as allowing the air to circulate. Green facades cover the parking area with climbing plants planted in the ground. Based on passive climatic strategies adapted to its tropical region, amenities for staff, and the intelligent distribution of workspaces, the pioneering initiative of the Jakob Factory Saigon is set to become a design reference for sustainable tropical living architecture in Vietnam and the area. The Net Zero flagship McDonald's at Disney World is a feat of climate responsive efficiency. Architects Ross Barney says, when we started doing the research for the design, we got into their corporate values, and one of their most important values is sustainability. And they've made some really big commitments like being zero energy by 2030. A distinct Florida flavor is offered with its spacious 6,000 square foot open lanai with shading photovoltaics. Porous pavers were used around the restaurant and jealousy windows open and close based on climatic conditions. Interactive elements include storytelling kiosks inside and stationary bikes outside, which were constructed in, in lieu of an outdoor play structure. If you pedal them fast enough, you'll light up the iconic Mickey D's sign. Here you can see some of its many sustainable design features, including 1,066 solar panels and 4,800 square feet of solar glass panels. Plus, the building can be cooled without air conditioning about 65% of the time. In fact, it's a first-of-its-kind project, being the only quick-service restaurant to aim for Net Zero Energy Building Certification from the International Living Future Institute. The new McDonald's Net Zero flagship at Walt Disney World Resort weaves together a narrative that champions environmental education and stewardship. Responding to Orlando's subtropical climate, it's a pilot for the company to explore new ways of reducing its environmental footprint while educating customers. Number five, resiliency through diversity and cultural identity, preserving and celebrating social influences with design. Located within the 32,000-acre Kenyan Barana Conservancy, the savanna grasslands surrounding Arijiju are rich with wildlife, including the highly endangered black rhino. Constantly under threat from poachers, architect Michaelis Boyd designed a home to be hidden from view. The client's English mother and Nigerian father influenced the design, an alternative to the traditional African thatched roof in favor of a hybridization of African and European styles. Inspired by ancient architecture and monastic buildings, local stone and grass planted roofs help it to blend in with the surrounding landscape. Meru stone from a nearby quarry was used for the walls and Gravilla timber for the ceiling beams, lentils, pergolas, and flat grass planted roofs. The home was inspired by a French abbey with references to the buried rock-hewn churches of Lalabella in Ethiopia. 
Described as one of the most beautiful houses in Africa, the front door opens up to a green oasis courtyard garden set within colonnaded, groined vaulted walkways and the roof terrace reached by a hidden stairway. The Safari Lodge home, Ari Juju, takes its name from the Maasai word for the hill on which it was built. Situated near a watering hole, the terraced property has been carefully oriented towards sweeping views of the snow-capped peaks of Mount Kenya, unobtrusive and embedded in the landscape. One hundred years ago, Thailand's King Rama V created the Rangsit rice plantations, which were later paved over. The once lost rice fields are reborn with the Thammasat University rooftop farm, Asia's largest organic rooftop farm. Inspired by traditional agricultural practices on mountainous terrains across Southeast Asia, turf unites principles of modern landscape design with traditional agriculture of rice terraces. Turf incorporates sustainable food production, renewable energy, organic waste, water management, and public space. Nearly 50 kinds of edible species are grown here, including rice, indigenous vegetables and herbs, and fruit trees. Runoff is captured in four retention ponds at the feet of the buildings, mitigating and storing up to almost 3.1 million gallons of water. Landscape architect Land Process says, Amidst the climate crisis, food and water scarcity pose tremendous threats to human civilization. To prioritize global food security and the health of our people and the environment, cities must utilize neglected spaces to efficiently and sustainably produce food. Through volunteering, 40,000 students and nearby residents learn about this cultural landscape and their heritage. Lessons on Thai agriculture, native soil, and nutrition are embedded into turf, educating future leaders to adapt and embrace climatic challenges by building sustainable cities for generations to come. Guha is a multi-purpose complex in Indonesia, combining a diversity of programs separating public and private access at the entrance. It comprises OMA Library, a dental clinic, a private residence, and raw architecture studio. Raw architecture encompassed nine key materials to reflect its experimentation of local craftsmanship, steel, wood, glass, metal, gypsum, bamboo, plastic, stone, and concrete. The guild was renovated and space was added to the OMA library, providing more storage for bookshelves, a bookstore, and a gallery. Guha Bamboo is a new three-story bamboo structure with two additional basement levels. The entire building was designed to address the tropical climate dripping with native vines. Construction was performed by generations of craftsmen from West Java and integrates the traditional fish mouth joint in bamboo, which cuts the end of a wood-like substance in a U-shape and positions another piece on top with more modern methods and materials such as steel. The guha facades are made of concrete and vertical steel with bamboo louvers and are open to the north and south and closed at the west side. Abundant vegetation everywhere brings nature into the Indonesian mixed architecture of steel and bamboo. Number four, revitalizing waterfronts, landscape refuges as redevelopment, creating safe spaces against sea rise with a symbiotic relationship with water. Pier 54 in New York Harbor was damaged by Hurricane Sandy in 2013, and a solution was sought for its repair and reactivation. Heatherwick Studio designed a new pier that could draw from the remaining wooden piles and preserve the existing marine habitats offered by these remnants. And so this spring, New Yorkers will get an entirely new type of public space, an immersive experience with nature and art. Among other recreational spaces, the hilly landscaped refuge will have walking trails, a public plaza, and a pair of performance stages. Local firm MNLA's landscape design was conceived as a leaf floating on water. Enormous concrete tulip pots, which actually comprise several distinct concrete petals, 
house numerous and heavy plantings. MNLA developed an extensive soil and drainage system consisting of a drainage mat, gravel, geofoam, and soil. The load was then analyzed by the structural team at Arup. Designed to account for rising sea levels, the Little Island superstructure will also act as a maritime botanic garden with 35 species of trees, 65 species of shrubs, and 270 variety of grasses, perennials, vines, and bulbs, many of which have been selected for their fragrance and attractiveness to birds and pollinators. Aiming for a car-free environment, the master plan for Penang South Islands in Malaysia will have mixed-use districts visualized as urban lily pads for 15 to 18,000 residents. Architect Bjarke Ingels says, Biodiversity will support the Penang 2030 vision with a clear focus on livability, on stimulating a socially and economically inclusive development, and on environmental sustainability for future generations. Spanning various topographies, Penang has great biodiversity, but recently its coastal zones and natural habitats have been disrupted by urban development. The new master plan is conceived as an urban mosaic of three diverse islands, the channels, the mangroves, and the laguna. The channels will have a wave pool and 500-acre digital technology park, will contain local government and research institutions, and enhance its cultural coast. Dedicated to businesses, the mangroves will be organized around a network of sheltered urban wetlands where mangroves serve an important natural infrastructure for sequestering more than four times as much carbon as a typical forest. Finally, the lagoon is organized around a central marina and eight smaller islands form a miniature archipelago with floating, stilted, and terraced housing. Newly established marine habitats support biodiversity underwater with ecological corridors connecting above. Truly an ecological urban mosaic. Number three, timber rising for climate change policy, growing a future lower carbon built environment from sustainably managed forests. Designed by Perkins and Will, the Canada Earth Tower in Vancouver, British Columbia, is conceived as a landmark timber tower demonstrating cutting edge sustainable construction. Dramatically reducing the project's greenhouse gas emissions through carbon sequestration, it would become one of the world's tallest hybrid wood towers at 40 stories. With laminated wood and concrete to form the structural system, the benchmark setting mixed use development will contain about 200 apartments, along with shops, restaurants, and office space, with Cornelia Hahn Oberlander as landscape architect designing green spaces. Beyond timber, the architects say the project will be a zero emissions building and will not consume fossil fuels. Integrated photovoltaics will generate about 25% of the building's electricity and wood will be highlighted throughout the interior of the building. A tower rises up from a U-shaped podium wrapping an entire courtyard with plants, trees, and seating. On the south face of the building, communal gardens are found at every third floor as part of the project's goal is to support community and dramatically improve livability in tall, urban residential buildings. The Atlassian Sydney headquarters is the Australian software giant's new global home base. It's spread across about 40 stories, making it the world's tallest commercial hybrid timber tower. Lushly planted outdoor terraces are central to the design. Using mass timber construction, or MTC, technology, the wood tower will be wrapped in a distinctive glass and steel facade with staggered gardens, helping Atlassian reach its sustainability goals. In addition, a historic train station from 1904 will be revitalized and incorporated into the lower levels of the new building. Integrated photovoltaics within the facade will provide 100% renewable energy, and self-shade capabilities will help to counter internal heat gain. By using mass timber building methods, 
the tower will boast 50% less embodied carbon in its construction and is expected to consume 50% less energy than newly built conventional buildings. Supported by the steel exoskeleton, the tower will be divided into six distinct but interconnected habitats or neighborhoods interlaced within a network of vertical parks. The new headquarters is designed to accommodate 4,000 workers in Sydney's new tech district and the design will help the company achieve their goal of net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Encouraging more developers to use wood, in 2010, Japan's government passed a law requiring wood to be used for all public buildings of three stories or fewer, which makes sense in a country where forests cover approximately two-thirds of the land. At 1,148 feet, or 350 meters high, the W350 project in Tokyo would be the world's tallest timber tower. At a cost of an estimated 600 billion yen, or a whopping 5.6 billion U.S. dollars, the multi-use skyscraper is scheduled to be completed in 2041, marking the 350th anniversary of its developer, Sumitomo Forestry Company. The 70-story tower will be a hybrid structure made of 90% wood and 10% steel, and a steel vibration control framework will be used due to Japan's high rate of earthquakes. Green-roofed balconies will populate the mega tower's exterior on all four sides of the building. The company says the wooden skyscraper will offer a view of biodiversity in an urban setting in which people can enjoy fresh air outside, rich natural elements, and sunshine filtering through foliage. Number two, creating environmental sustainability with science, technology, and green zones, enriching and reinforcing people with flexibility, community, and green spaces. Designed by BIG, the PLUS in Magnor, Norway, is conceived as a radial array of four main production halls that connect at the center hub, which wraps around a public circular courtyard. The color-coded PLUS will employ several Industry 4.0 solutions, such as smart robots, self-driving Tesla trucks, and a tablet to manage the entire factory. The facade will be constructed from local timber, low-carbon concrete, and recycled reinforcement steel, and the Vestra factory will operate as a 300-acre public park for hiking and camping while serving as a landmark aligned with the region's mission to establish a green manufacturing industry. Designed to be a Paris Agreement-proof building, every aspect of the design is based on principles of renewable and clean energy, such as ensuring a minimum of 50% lower greenhouse gas emissions than comparable factories. Inside, each wing has one alternating ceiling corner lifted to create inclined roofs to allow views from the production halls to the outside and the forest canopies. From all four sides of the buildings, Visitors and staff are invited to hike around and conclude on the Green Roof Terrace, transforming the future factory museum into a campus in the woods. Designed by MVRDV's Tech Task Force, Chengdu Sky Valley is a competition entry for the future science and technology city that fuses technology with nature, urban with rural, and modernity with tradition. The design places resilience at its heart by retaining the agricultural landscape and valleys of the Lin Pan area. A computational workflow of digital scripts were developed to analyze and add to the existing landscape, taking a parametric approach to ensure a system here, not a fixed design, to be adjusted at any time. The design was developed around three main valleys, the Knowledge Valley, the Experience Valley, and the Venture Valley. Surrounding these valleys, buildings are further grouped into seven mixed-use clusters of distinct characters with a transit-oriented development hub. Focusing on cross-industrial research and innovation in food and agriculture, the proposal seeks to be a 15-minute city with travel between only two points taking less than 15 minutes. A network of gently sloping paths follows the topography of the area with public bridges that allow for cross-industrial encounters 
and cooperation connecting the building clusters. By retaining the existing landscape, the master plan forms a more diverse community with a wider choice of lifestyles. The Woven City is a fully connected ecosystem of 3x3 three three city blocks powered by hydrogen fuel cells, solar energy, and geothermal energy to be built at the base of Mount Fuji in Japan. This living laboratory of full-time residents and researchers will test and develop technologies such as autonomy, robotics, personal mobility, and smart homes. Three street types accommodating different speeds weave together to form an organic grid pattern to help accelerate the testing of autonomy. Buildings made mostly of wood will minimize the carbon footprint using traditional Japanese wood joinery combined with robotic production and rooftops will be covered in photovoltaics. Toyota plans to weave in the outdoors throughout the city with native vegetation and hydroponics. Typical offices flexibly accommodate workstations, lounges, and indoor gardens. Residences will test new technology such as in-home robotics to assist with daily living. Hidden from view in an underground network lies the infrastructure of the city, including hydrogen power, stormwater filtration, and a goods delivery network. Striving towards a carbon neutral society with plans to break grounds and phases beginning in 2021, Toyota Woven City sounds really spectacular. And number one, the post-crisis city, rethinking sustainable vertical urbanism. What will architecture and design look like after COVID-19? Biodiverse, resilient, and flexible. Acting as the world's tallest carbon sink tower, the Mandragore would rise 2,418 feet high in the East River in Manhattan. Named after the mandrake plant with an anthropomorphic human-like form, architects say the symbolism of the body confronts us with our own destiny, the one that reminds us that we must preserve our environment in order to live in symbiosis with nature. The residential tower addresses the potential city of tomorrow. Using plenty of living architecture, wood construction, surface geothermal, wood turbines, and photovoltaics, it would combat the greenhouse effect and help New York City become carbon neutral by 2050. Covered in over 10,000 plants, the sinuous mandragore also explores the idea of energy sobriety, a political concept aimed at reducing energy consumption through lifestyle changes and societal transformations. Each apartment would have an office, reducing commuting to work, pollution, energy, etc. With its various measures to decarbonize the air, using passive energies and green infrastructure, the Mandragore proposes going beyond simply being carbon neutral, making the building carbon negative. The new Exposita building is a multi-use complex in Albania's capital that will rise 93 meters high. The architects say, the building's unusual form allows it to partially encircle a new green space that is particularly valuable in a busy capital while open areas are few and far between. A combination of the 24 levels of commercial, residential, and public spaces are arranged according to function with residential upper floors having generous plantings followed by office and commercial with parking below. A smaller two-story building will house a nursery and kindergarten. Tirana's climate is defined as humid temperate and the design reflects this with solar shading and high insulation to avoid using air conditioning, resulting in the building using 30% less energy. A notch of space in the rear of the building provides a diagonal slice of air and divides two sides of commercial development on the ground floor. The large vegetated terraces act as passive solar regulators, creating a green oasis. Designed by Heatherwick Studio, Eden is set 66 feet above a tropical ground-level garden in fabulous Singapore. Rising up through the ultra-luxury residential tower is a vertical ribbon, which the architects deem planted chandeliers. And these double-height balconies offer privacy and natural shade. 
Thomas Heatherick says, instead of glass-clad edifices with token balconies, each home within Eden will have a lush garden right at the doorstep with organic and generous living spaces achieved by breaking up the traditional boxy floor plate. Each apartment has a large central living space surrounded by smaller individual rooms and the wide shell-like balconies dripping with vegetation. Eden's dramatic 18-meter high lobby offers just a preview of its over 20 species of lush plants. A radical departure from the glass and steel tower typology, the building is designed to mature like a sapling that has taken root beneath the streets, pulling the landscape of Singapore up into the sky. I'll end 2020 with a beautiful dose of reality for our number one position of the post-crisis city, Rethinking Sustainable Vertical Urbanism. With the huge success of Stefano Boeri's first vertical forest in 2014, the aptly named Bosco Verticale in Milan, the architect's two vertical forests in China are being planted now, one in Nanjing and the other in Huanggang. Located close to Wuhan, the easy home Huanggang Vertical Forest City Complex comprises five towers and will be vegetated with 395 trees, 3,600 shrubs, and 12,000 perennial plants. Here you can see its first tree being lifted up almost 300 feet, or 90 meters, above the ground to the 25th floor. Located about 300 kilometers or 186 miles from Shanghai, the Nanjing Vertical Forest has two towers that will host a total of 27 native plant species, 600 large trees, 200 medium-sized trees, and over 2,500 shrubs and hanging plants. This vegetation will regenerate local biodiversity, reduce CO2 emissions every year, and produce up to 16.5 tons of oxygen every year. Architect Stefano Boeri says, The vertical forests in Nanjing and Huanggang are a reference model for sustainable green architecture in China and other Southeast Asian countries. Okay, for 2021, let's treat ourselves to some good old fashioned love and compassion, along with design and action towards cooling our warming planet. So for looking to 2021, we know that physical security, clean ecosystems and biodiversity will still be key elements needed to be addressed on our climate challenged planet. Don't you agree? Here are just a few projects on my watch list for resilient trends in 2021. Located close to Shanghai, Hangzhou, and Suzhou, the current Jiaxing train station in China had reached its maximum capacity. The new project brief covers an area of almost 35 and a half hectares, encompassing the train station, the plazas to the north and south, and a renovation of the adjacent People's Park. In addition to a one-to-one -one rebuilding of the historic station building, a new human-scaled underground train station will be flooded with light, allowing the ground floor space to be given back to nature. Sunken courtyards connect the underground commercial space with the parkland above, and the roof of the new station will be covered in photovoltaics. The new train station will become a borderless park where citizens and travelers can dwell and enjoy the beautiful natural environment. In contrast with the busy infrastructure beneath, the park will be a place of comfort and quiet, bringing the city's center back to the people. Mad architects proclaim, a shared space between Jiaxing's citizens and travelers, this new green urban center will transform into a train station in the forest. The 1.9 kilometer long Champs-Élysées is one of Paris's most famous landmarks and often considered the most beautiful avenue in the world. And Paris mayor Anne Hidalgo wants to turn it into an extraordinary garden at a cost of 250 million euros or 302 million US dollars to bring back Parisians to the extremely popular tourist destination. The Champs-Élysées is named after the mythical Greek paradise the Elysian Fields. It was originally a mixture of swamp and kitchen gardens built in 1667 by André Lenotre as an extension of the Tuileries Garden. 
The local committee determined the legendary avenue had lost its splendor during the last 30 years and its extremely verdant makeover would be welcomed by all. Designed and headed by architects PCA Stream, the redevelopment will involve the planting of thousands of plants and trees to enhance the area to be ecological, desirable, and inclusive. Plans include reducing space for vehicles by half, turning roads into pedestrian and green areas, and creating tunnels of trees to improve air quality. Bicycle paths and children's playgrounds will also be added. Described by City Hall as a municipal priority, plans also include redesigning the famous Place de la Concorde, expected to be completed before the Olympic Games in 2024, and it will have new terrace gardens and a pool. Completion of the Champs-Élysées is slated for 2030 and includes a landscaping project around the Eiffel Tower area as well. Situated at the Shenzhen Bay Super Headquarters Base, Tower C comprises two towers of almost 400 meters high to integrate clusters of corporate headquarters accommodating 300,000 employees daily. There'll be venues for international conferences and other cultural programming, and the Global Technology Hub will also have residential, a transportation center, botanical grasslands, and even a coastal zone with wetlands. Connecting upwardly with its adjacent park and plazas, which transform into a terraced landscape extending upwards within its two towers, the public is invited into the heart of the building in sweeping bridges that tie the towers together and give panoramic views of the city. The tower's double insulated glass curtain wall acts as vertical channels for self-shading and incorporates ventilating registers to draw outside air through operable cavities. Aquaponics gardens on all terrace levels will biologically filter contaminants from the local environment and also included are water collection and recycling, as well as photovoltaics to harvest solar energy for the district. Prioritizing pedestrians, the tower's design also includes extensive bicycle parking and charging facilities. The multi-dimensional vertical city integrates the city and nature within its central green axis with the transit-oriented development of Shenzhen's new spine. And finally, I'll leave you with the beautiful aquarella, complementing its namesake style of watercolors with its lovely muted colors of stone and vegetation. Nestled in a lush valley on the side of a volcano east of Ecuador's capital of Quito, Aquarela is a high-rise apartment complex with towers between 7 and 10 stories high. Designed by Atelier Jean Nouvel, it will boast a large array of residential amenities, 12,000 square meters worth. Completed in December 2020 along with the communal facilities, Phase 1 comprises three terrace towers named Terra, Aqua, and Cielo, Earth, Water, and Sky. Native trees and other plants will cover surfaces, including the stonework's nooks and crannies. The green roofs and vegetated balconies will be watered with harvested rainwater and gray water from the apartment plumbing system, which will be filtered and recirculated. A total of 850 new trees will be planted, 10 for every one cut down during development. Solar panels will be mounted on several surfaces as well. Interiors will use reclaimed materials, including a front desk made of lightning-struck wood salvaged after a storm. Aquarela's sustainable credentials extend to green mortgages, offering lower interest rates. The next six towers will be completed in three phases between 2021 and 2023. Okay, that's it. So hopefully we'll be able to see each other again soon in person. And for now, Aramis and I would like to say goodbye and please everyone stay safe. So I hope you enjoyed my 14th installment of GreenRoofs.com's top 10 list. And I look forward to continue to compile the 2021 hot list as well. Please visit us at GreenRoofs.com to stay on top of all the global green roof and green wall news. And don't forget to join us on social media and get your company all the exposure you deserve by getting listed in the directory. And here's a quick look at hopefully a really complete list 
of my inspirational sources and resources that I used for the 2020-21 top 10 list. <laughs>